Hello guys, Bishop Butters here. I'm here bringing you an RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial on timers. It's different from what I usually do, but what the hell. Uh, this is just a simple tutorial showing you how to start a timer, how to stop a timer, and how to use a timer to, say, cause a game over, and how to have stuff happen in the middle of timers. Something like that. Alright, so what we got here is we got the player, we got an enemy, blah blah blah, I end the timer. Battle processing, when you beat him, it stops the timer, and control switch is on, and this event will start when you touch it. Uh, okay, and it will disappear after you touch it, so... Okay, and this event over here is something different, but allow me to explain it in better detail. This is not exactly newbie friendly, so if you are... Uh, if you don't know what the hell a timer is already, then you might be confused. In order to insert a timer first, you go down to here to control timer. Then you can either stop a timer or you can start it. I set the timer for 30 seconds. And then, well, if you don't know anything about eventing, this causes it go to the next event page, which basically allows you to stop it from doing anything. Okay. And this enemy stops the timer. And, uh,. I, for testing purposes, I made a very simple enemy. Uh, shit, I put him in the wrong troop, didn't I? Oh well. There we go. Anyway, he's only got one HP. That was just, you know, to make it really simple. And uh, as you can see... Yep, yeah, that's the right one. Okay, just making sure. Okay, so simply, this event right here, the one I just moved, blah blah blah, that starts the timer for 30 seconds. Defeating this enemy right over here starts uh, stops the timer. That alone is useless. So over here, what I have is a rather comp like it's an annoying conditional branch. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you set it to parallel process, okay? And what we have here, I'll explain by actually redoing it. First thing you want to do is go to conditional branch. As you can see, it says creates a portion to be run only when specific conditions are met. Go down to timer. Now, if you just want it so that it causes your game to end, don't just ignore this part, but like say you want to go for it at halfway, popping something up. So, at 15 seconds or less. But say also you want it to be conditional on it not being at zero. So there you go. So what we have here is a conditional branch saying if it's 15 seconds or less and it's also 0 seconds or less, game over. If it's not 0 seconds or less, pop up. Saying time mer halfway done. Okay. Else nothing. That basically allows it, if none of these conditions are met, it won't do anything. Because I already have all that up there, having that conditional branch run a second time is literally a waste of space, so there we go. And now let's play test it. Okay. And as you can see, the timer up there started. And now let's just let it run out first without defeating the enemy. So, how are you guys doing today? Uh, I'm okay. A little tired, considering I just woke up and haven't eaten yet, and I only the only thing I did was drink water. See, time halfway up. Oh, that's the bad thing. That's something I did not anticipate. It constantly is checking for that. So, anyway, at zero. Oh no, I lost the game. Eh. Anyway, let's go back to new game, restart it, and blah 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 in the timer. As you can see, I didn't even name it, but boom. And that ends the timer. So, game end. Anyway, uh, not sure why that, ha uh, what happened was it, because it's on a parallel process, it was con always checking for these conditions. So, I'm not sure what to do with that, but the easiest solution would be just not to do it that way. 
But anyway, that's just a simple tutorial on how to make timers and how to use them efficiently. Or use them at all. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I don't know, maybe ask for more if you want it. Uh, see you guys later.